Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the anatomy of the nervous system. This is kind of the introduction to get you guys kind of up to speed and going on the nervous system, okay? <laughs> What's the nervous tissue? What's nervous tissue? It's the next Kleenex in the box. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Okay, so, all right. Uh, so, nervous system. The nervous system is basically the system in your body uh, dealing with your brain and your spine and all of your nerves that basically carry signals from your body back to your brain, from your brain back to your body. It's controlling and regulating everything. It works in conjunction with the endocrine system, that is the system of hormones, which are chemical messengers. Uh, the nervous system would be electrical messengers. So let's go ahead and look at some of these things. The basic structure of a nerve is this. Uh, you've got a cell that basically kind of looks like this. All right. Um, you've got the body of the cell right here. All right. It's got a little nucleus here in the middle and all that. And then coming off this end right here, these are structures all called dendrites. Okay. These are dendrites. Coming down this way, this long snaky thing, this is called the axon, okay? And um, those are the three major parts to a nerve cell. The body, the dendrites, and the axon. The signals will always go from the dendrites toward the axon, okay? And then it's from the axon that this cell will then, uh, through some chemical messengers called neurotransmitters, will carry the signal from this nerve to the adjacent nerve next to it, okay? Um, to speed this whole process up, uh, oftentimes the axons have this insulation uh, that kind of comes in like this, and that insulation is known as the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath, and that acts as an insulator to make sure that when the signal goes down that axon, that it can go relatively quickly. Uh, we want our nerve signals to move rapidly. Okay, um, that myelin sheath actually allows the signal, instead of traveling the whole nerve, it allows it to jump from this point to this point to this point to this point. Those individual points are called the nodes of Ranvier. So, uh, but that's the basic structure of a nerve cell. The nervous system is made up of this. A nerve cell and a neuron are the same thing. Nerve cell and neuron, uh, those words are synonyms, okay? Um, a nerve is a bundle of nerve cells or a bundle of neurons kind of all wrapped up. Just like if you go to uh, and you want, your, you want your cable and your internet and your phone all put together into one thing, you're going to bundle those things. We're going to put three cables into one to send it into your house. You're bundling. That's what a nerve is. It's a bundle of neurons. Okay, And this is a neuron, the basic anatomy of a neuron. Right? Okay, let's look at how these neurons are organized through the body. Okay? So we're gonna look at the organization of the nervous system. Nervous system. I'm gonna be writing this stuff down just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to follow because there's a lot of terms that are coming up here. All right? Uh, there's nervous system is actually divided into two major areas. We have the peripheral and the central nervous systems, right? So you have two areas, the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system. The central nervous system, this one right here, is composed of two things. You have the brain and you have the spine. Remember, the spine is not the backbone is not the vertebrae. The spine is the nerve that runs down inside through the openings in the vertebrae. It's what your vertebrae protect. That's your spine, okay? The spine, ver the vertebral column is different from the spine. Those are different things. Spine is a nerve, okay? So your central is the brain and the spine. And we'll talk about those later in other videos. The peripheral nervous system, right? You've got two sets, two different areas that these nerves are going to handle. We have what is called the somatic peripheral system and the autonomic 
the autonomic nervous system. Oh, there he is. I had to look down at my notes to make sure I was spelling it correctly. All right, we're going to deal with the autonomic first. The autonomic system, this is the system that deals with um, uh, your organs, your internal aspects, the things going on inside of your body that you're really not paying attention to, right? And you have two areas to this autonomic system. You have the parasympathetic And you have the sympathetic, tick, right? You have the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system, right? Easiest way for me, this is what helps me to remember it, is the sympathetic nervous system is the one that has, it's the one that is like feeling sorry for you. Why is it feeling sorry for you? Because something bad is really happening right now, okay? The parasympathetic system, uh, this is dealing, if there's an emergency going on and you need to get aroused, you need to get, you gotta get the adrenaline going, you gotta, you gotta flip that car off that burning person or something crazy is going on, ah! right? And all that stuff that's going on, adrenaline is a major part of this parasympathetic system, kind of gets things going, right? Your eye, your vision is gonna increase, your heart rate's gonna increase, and all that stuff's gonna go on uh, because there's an emergency going on, there's something that needs to be dealt with, and so there's physical changes inside of your body. Anytime that you lie, that's what the basis of a lie detector. Lie detector is detecting what? It's looking for a change in tin skin, uh, uh, skin temperature. It's looking for a change in skin moisture. It's looking for a change in heart rate, uh, a change in your pulse rate, a change in your breathing, a change in your blood pressure. It's looking for those changes. Those are sympathetic changes that are occurring because you're putting yourself under stress. Why? Because you're lying and you're afraid of getting caught. And so your sympathetic nervous system is gonna betray you to the lie detector Okay, and that's what's going on. Your parasympathetic system is not dealing uh, with any kind of emergency stuff. It's dealing with housekeeping. Your parasympathetic is going, okay, what's our blood pressure right now? Okay, that's good. Let's make sure it stays there. Uh, do we have enough uh, body temperature? Is our body temperature okay? Uh, where's that food in our digestive system? Is it moving okay? Okay. Oh, I'm so tired. Want some coffee? Um, yeah, it's, it's the parasympathetic. It's the housekeeping. It's the thing that is making sure that everything on the inside is running nicely and smoothly without you having to consciously think about it. So those are the two autonomic. Okay, they're functioning without us consciously being able to control them. They are happening purely uh, by means of, of well, we have to stay alive. Basically, but that's what it is. Now the somatic, that's different. The somatic, these are the nerves that we have a little bit more control over. Well, one, one set of them anyway. All right, the somatic also comes in two flavors. Uh, the somatic, we have the sensory nerve, sensory nerves, and the somatic, we have the motor nerves. Sensory and motor. The sensory nerves, exactly the way it sounds, are our five senses. Our sense of sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch. Uh, all of that information from those nerves are flying up into our brain constantly, trying to tell our brain what is going on around us, right? That way your brain is constantly aware. You are not aware. If your sensory nerves were allowed into your brain 100%, you would be totally freaking out right now. I'm just saying. It'd be like watching 10,000 televisions while listening to 10,000 radios while having people touch you with 10,000 different things. It would be nuts. It would be crazy. Your body has a filtering system called the limbic system that helps you to filter out what is important to listen to and what is not important to listen to as far as the senses sending signals to your brain. For instance, right now, you are very keyed in auditorily and visually watching me on this video and learning this stuff and listening to the words. You're probably not thinking about the way that your clothes feel on your body. Until now. <laughs> gotcha. Okay? Why? Because your body, when you put clothes on, your brain said, oh, there's clothes going on us. And then your nerves kept saying, there's clothes on us, there's clothes on us, there's clothes on us. There's... Eventually, your brain goes, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Tell me if they come off. 
that would be an important piece of information to have. So that's what your sensory nerves are doing. So they're being filtered out. So you're only paying attention to the things that you're supposed to be paying attention to. True attention deficit dis disorder is a breakdown in that filtering process where you are literally listening to 10,000 televisions and 10,000 radios and being touched with 10,000 different objects all at the same time. No wonder you have a straw hard time focusing. No wonder. That is genuine breakdown of the limbic system, the inability of the sensory nerves to be filtered. It's a terrible place to be. All right, motor neurons, right? The sensory neurons are the body telling the brain what's going on around it. So now the motor neurons here, that is the brain telling the body what to do about it. Okay, that's the brain telling the body what to do about it. So they are sending signals from the brain back out to all the different major muscle groups, <clears throat> specifically the involuntary muscles, not your digestive system, that's parasympathetic, but your skeletal muscles, it's sending the messages out to your skeletal muscles to tell your body what to do. So for instance, if you're out uh, and you are um, walking in the woods and all of a sudden you see a big grizzly bear running at you, your brain is taking pictures of the grizzly bear and the grizzly bear is getting slightly bigger compared to everything else around it. And your brain says, gosh, uh, according to the sensory nerves, uh, that grizzly bear is running at me. <laughs> we better do something. So the brain sends out through the motor neurons and it tells the muscles what to do at that point, which is to fall into the ground in the fetal position and cry. And uh, since it's a grizzly bear coming at you, go ahead and uh, get right with Jesus, okay? Because you might be meeting him if there's a big grizzly bear. Yeah, that's really important. So, so that's the motor neurons. This is the basic structure of the nervous system. Peripheral and central. Central is just brain and spine. Peripheral is the autonomic and the somatic. The autonomic handling the things that we don't have to think about. And the somatic bringing information from the outside world so that our body can send information back to the muscles and tell us what to do about it. The nervous system.